Hey guys, so today we have another Mopar news video. Yesterday at the 2018 Los Angeles Auto Show, the Jeep Gladiator was revealed. The show was open to the public on November 30th, but the star of the show through the first two media days will undoubtedly be the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. There was lots of anticipation and leaks for the model, and it was originally thought to be called the Scrambler, but as it turns out it's going to be the Gladiator, and I'll be giving all the details that I could find for it. I normally don't specialize in Jeep videos on the channel, but it is a Mopar, so I thought I'd try it to make this video. Let me know if you want more Jeep content in the future. So to start off, here's some footage of the Jeep Gladiator in its natural habitat. So what is the Gladiator? Well, it's the first Jeep pickup truck since the 1992 Comanche, and Jeep is touting it as the most capable mid-sized truck ever, which is a pretty bold statement. The Gladiator is built on a modified and stretched chassis taken from the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. The Gladiator frame is 30.6 inches longer than the Unlimited, and the wheelbase is up 19.9 inches. It's got the recognizable front end of a Wrangler, with the similar front grille, headlights, and also Jeep Square taillights. Jeep has made it clear that there are no compromises for the Gladiator capabilities. It has the 4x4 system of the Wrangler, along with best-in-class towing, fuel-efficient powertrains, removable doors, fold-down windshield where the roof can come off, and more. And this also makes the Jeep truck the first pickup in the US since the 1991 Dodge Dakota Sport convertible to have a removable top, which is pretty cool. So let's get into some features. Although it just may seem like a Wrangler with a bed added, Jeep says that the Gladiator shares less than 50% of its parts with a Wrangler JL. Most of the body section and interior is similar to a Wrangler Unlimited, including the exact same doors. There are two hardtop and one softtop configurations available for the roof. The softtop comes standard while the available hardtops can split into three sections with two T-top panels in front and a large back half. And the softtop can easily fold away. The doors, hinges, hood, fenders, windshield frame, and tailgate are all made of high strength lightweight aluminum to try to improve fuel economy as much as possible. The bed is constructed of steel, and you can also remove all four doors for an open air experience, as I've said, with the windshield folding down as well. As for the changes, the grille is redesigned for better cooling when hauling heavy loads. The hood and front fenders are also redesigned with wider slats and the addition of a larger 800 watt electric fan. The 5 foot bed has some cool features. It can lock down in a partially open state, which is helpful for hauling longer sheet goods. The bed also has integrated tie downs, lighting, bed liner, and a power source. The Gladiator still uses solid front and rear axles, which are Dana 44s. The Wrangler's 5 link coil spring suspension is used in the front, but the rear has a design unique to the Gladiator with a 5 link suspension with forged steel trailing arms and a panhard rod. The suspension is tuned for a balance of off-road handling and off-road capability, giving you a better ride quality whether or not you are carrying cargo. Also the Gladiator has a trick suspension with for certain models, which can electronically disconnect sway bars for increased wheel travel when you're off-roading. As for the interior, it's also pretty similar to the Wrangler. There are bolts featured on the shifter, grab handles, and the frame of the infotainment system. The center console has metal plated accents. There are tons of grab handles, the push button starter is weather protected, there are mesh storage nets, and also phone cubbies. There are two seat options, cloth or leather, with adjustable bolsters and lumbar support. You can also opt for heated front seats and a heated steering wheel. The rear seats are new to the Gladiator, with a segment leading 38 inches of rear leg room, beating out the likes of the Honda Ridgeline and Chevy Colorado. And there's also a lockbox underneath the seat base. As for tech, there's the 4th gen Uconnect system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can choose from the standard 7 inch screen or the available 8.4 inch. There's also up to 80 safety features that money can buy for you. USB ports come standard in the front and back and there's also a 400 watt 3 pronged outlet for household goods such as to charge a laptop. There are two powertrain options. The only engine available at the beginning will be the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that makes 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque 
paired with either a 6-speed manual or 8-speed automatic. And there's also a 3-liter eco-diesel turbo V6, which will be available only in later 2020. This is a redesigned version of the one found in the Ram, and only has 260 horses, but there's also 442 pound-feet of torque. And this engine, you only have one choice of transmission, an 8-speed auto. All Gladiators have a part-time four-wheel drive system, and at this time, there's no fuel economy numbers released for either engine. Maximum payload is 1,600 pounds, but to get this, you need the sport trim with the 3.6 liter V6 and six-speed manual, and a 3.73 final drive gear ratio. The maximum towing capability is 7,650 pounds, which is actually 150 more than the Ford Ranger, but again, this is only with the sport trim, 3.6 liter V6, 8-speed auto, and 4.1 final drive ratio. There's also 33-inch off-road tires, giving up to 30 inches of water fording. Now let's take a look at the different versions. There are four, Sport, Sport S, Overland, and Rubicon. Pricing isn't released yet, but it's expected the Rubicon will be at least $65,000. Sport and Sport S are at the bottom of the range, and they will have the most towing and payload capabilities. The Overland is more luxury focused, and it will add features like body colored fender flares and LED headlights. The top of the line is the Rubicon, which adds tons of off-road equipment. The list includes a disconnecting front sway bar, 2-inch diameter shocks, 33-inch mud-terrain tires, shorter gearing, wider axles, electronic locking front and rear differentials, skid plates to protect the fuel tank transfer case and transmission, and steel rock rails for the body and bed to minimize damage. One really cool feature is that there's a front-mounted camera that helps you see over hills and can be great for off-roading use. And Jeep also says that 35-inch tires will fit with no modifications needed. As for colors, there's 10 choices. Billet Metallic, Black, Bright White, Firecracker Red, Gator, Gobi, Granite Crystal, Hydro Blue, Pumpkin Metallic, and Stink Gray. As I've said, we don't know the pricing yet, but the Jeep Gladiator will arrive in the second quarter of 2019 as a 2020 model. But pricing should be higher than Wranglers are right now, and the estimation is $65,000 for a Gladiator Rubicon. Production starts early next year at the Toledo plant. So that's all the information we know right now about the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Jeep fans are ecstatic that there is a return of the Jeep pickup, and there really seems to be genuine excitement about the model and tons of never-ending demand for Jeeps. So as long as the price is right, this should be a huge success. What do you think of the 2020 Jeep Gladiator? Hope you enjoyed the video, and make sure to subscribe for more Mopar content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. And before I go, I'll leave you with lots more shots of the Gladiator.